Welcome, friend. If you need anything, just call. Are you sure? My sincerest thanks. Styanax, the Hoplite, the Spear Carrier, the Shield Bearer, the Hero. We all know the story of Styanax and Leviathan. How wily Arya outwitted the cult leader they called the Philanthropist and called her Warframe ally down into the very heart of his monstrous laboratories. And no wonder, because these events did not happen in some distant epoch. In the times of the Orokin Fall, the Great Unraveling, the Age of Despots, or the Smaragdine Concord. They happened surprisingly recently. We have so many monsters. Every child in Orokin times heard legends of the Belly Gaunt, the Slather, and the Venomous Thrax. Those were only stories, but one was real. Its creator was dubbed the Philanthropist. A corpus renegade, he established a cult in a formerly desolate region, in a location which I have agreed to keep secret to deter would-be looters and Amateur archaeologists. The site was never abandoned, you see. And one person's historical curiosity is another's beloved home. With science, this philanthropist ensured ever more bountiful harvests and secured himself both gratitude and worship. Legend says he would travel the system, seeking out parentless children to shelter and educate. But this apparent charity concealed a darker purpose. <laughs> the Shield of Styanax, emblematic of his vow to protect those in danger. Young Arya was certainly in danger, and well she knew it. Along with her older brother, Darrow, she was one of the philanthropists chosen. When they came of age, they will be summoned for a ceremony called Ascension Day, at which they would be taken to dwell with the philanthropist in eternal paradise. Certainly, none of those taken were ever seen again. I do not know how Styanax became Arya's protector, but I am certain Arya knew that when the Philanthropist came for her, her ally would be waiting in the shadows. This was the fate of the Chosen, to be merged together into a single monstrous mass, Leviathan. What possessed the Philanthropist to create such a, a travesty? We can only speculate, but we know that he had been studying the infestation and that he believed Warframes to be weak and obsolete. Perhaps he craved domination over others. Perhaps he yearned to create new life. Life over which he alone was God. Regardless, he was too much of a coward to pilot the thing himself. That was to be Arya's role. But Arya called upon Styanax, who, if the ruins of the temple roof are any indication, made an explosive appearance. Faced with the certainty of defeat, the philanthropist clambered into Leviathan and took command of it. <laughs> Sketches of the Sinmora helmet were discovered among Arya's possessions, implying Styanax had a different earlier appearance. Arya must therefore have been in contact with Styanax long before her Ascension Day. But how? There is a story that crops were found flattened in those fertile fields 
in the shape of a lotus flower. Not easily visible from the ground, but detectable by an automated satellite. Styanax was there to defend Arya, and defend her he did. Colossal fist met unyielding shield again and again with agility and endurance. The Warframe outpaced his towering foe. As the Warframe and the monstrosity did battle, Arya saw a familiar face among the multitude. Her brother, Darrow. His blank eyes showing no sign of recognition. As Styanax struck and struck again with the Aphentis, making little headway against the relentless Leviathan, a final, desperate scream from Arya achieved the impossible. It awoke Darrow. From out of those thousands of fused bodies, a single mind was suddenly saying, No. Latching his remaining arm around his tormentor's throat with the very last of his life's strength, the doomed Darrow distracted the philanthropist long enough for Steinax to act. One last act of love and protection for his sister. But the Warframe hesitated. It seems he understood the importance of Darrow's rebellion. If one mind could turn upon its master, why not all of them? With but a gesture, he gave the captive minds their freedom. Suddenly awakened and aware of their hellish plight, the damned townspeople tore at the philanthropist's exposed face, the leviathan's body coming apart as arms broke free from the mass, clawing for revenge. Together, they dragged the screaming philanthropist down, rending and tearing. In that moment, we can be assured the philanthropist knew the depth of his failure, his defeat. Without worshippers, a god is nothing. And Styanax delivered the final merciful stroke. Imagine the horror the non-chosen felt in the aftermath. Fear, uncertainty, and above all, unquestioned habit had allowed a monster to flourish. Arya took over the cult and made it a community instead. They still thrive to this day, or so it is claimed. Styanax is the story's hero, but it was Arya's courage that summoned him. All revolutions begin when one voice dares to say, I will not. Somehow, across the dark reaches, Styanax saw that courage burning bright and swore it would not stand alone. I would visit Arya's temple myself, but I am indisposed at present. A uh, uh, long-standing condition. All donations are, of course, appreciated. He saved us, me and my brother, orphans of war. Brought us to this paradise to join the others. Until we came of age, until he summoned us. He called it Ascension Day. Five years ago, Darrow went to him. Now, it's my time. My dear child, your ascension is at hand.
fear not. All the chosen before you have played their part in my vision. Huh. I have something beautiful to show you. Liar. Where's my brother? Clever Arya. That fire. That singular determination. Mine to wield. Behold the fire thing. Your brother is here, somewhere, like all the other Chosen. You alone will be its driving force. Get in. It's over. A Warframe? <laughs> a relic. I will have to show you the future myself. Keep you close, Tenno.